I'm gonna introduce you to abuse, neglect, and exploitation in Florida, but I want to point out my friend, my friend and client, Ralph Dunnigan, who passed away last year. Uh, COVID-19 took him, and uh, you might recognize him. He was a editor at the Orlando Sentinel for about 35 or 40 years. Uh, he used to draw cartoons. He drew the Middleton's cartoon. He also drew Dunnigan's people. He also contributed to Grin and Bear it occasionally, and he was nice enough to gift me with a few of his cartoons, and I appreciated knowing him and knowing him well. I thought you'd appreciate this cartoon just in case you can't see it. It says, actually, I'm more frightened by some of the live people who vote with a newspaper headline about dead people voting. And that was written in 1998. So it goes way back. We're going to talk about the definitions and concepts related to abuse, neglect, and exploitation. We're going to talk about some civil ideas, some criminal penalties, and so forth. So, so, social welfare issues today. And I'm going to show you a lot of relevant statutes, a little bit more about my background so you'll understand why I have kind of a passion for elder law issues. When I was age, when I was about 10 years old, we went to live with my grandmother, who was starting to suffer from a little bit of diagnosis back then. They called it hardening, hardening of the arteries. Uh, we know now it's Alzheimer's disease. Uh, it was funny, one day we were sitting down to breakfast and my mother could not find any silverware in the silverware drawer, it was all missing. And my grandmother, who was quite a bit older than me, I was 12 years old at the time, she said, well, he stole it. And I said, what do you mean I stole it? She said, he stole it, I know where he's hiding it. And then she walked back to the back of the house and came out with a bag full of silverware that she had put away and was trying to blame me for stealing. I assure you, I didn't steal our silverware. <laughs> but that was one of the issues that people with Alzheimer's and dementia start to have. They have paranoid issues. They have uh, issues of not understanding what's going on and they deal with it in many different ways. Sometimes just to control their situation, they'll refuse to take a bath or refuse to clean themselves because that's the one thing that they can control. Uh, it can be really difficult. When my grandmother was about 75 years old, uh, there was a blizzard and the schools were, we were out of school for the day. And my grandmother, when she got up, she decided she was gonna go to the post office and took off walking outside in her nightgown in the middle of a blizzard in Tennessee on a mountain. Yeah, you know, those are the things I dealt with uh, until she died. Actually, she died just after I joined the Navy in November of 1986. I then got married, moved in with my in-laws while I was in the Navy. My father-in-law was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, and he lived at home with us. I say we, he lived with us. We lived with him and provided care for him all the way through uh, hospice care until his death. And then I inherited my mother-in-law, who lived with us for another 10 years until she went to a nursing home. She went to the Mayflower Nursing Home and I now serve on the board of directors of the Mayflower, uh, the Mayflower of Winter Park. In fact, I'll be vice chair of that board of directors this year. So that's just to give you an idea of my background and why I'm concerned with elder care. Now, First statute I'm gonna hit is uh, social welfare, chapter 415, 102. We're gonna go through a few definitions because a vulnerable adult doesn't have to be elderly. They don't have to be, they can be 18 years or older if they have impaired normal activities and they're unable to provide for their own care or things that affect their own care. So you can have a vulnerable adult who is 19 years old. Uh, we typically talk about guardian advocacies for children who are growing up toward adulthood and become adults and need that ongoing care that a parent can provide. Uh, those impairments may be due to disability, mental, emotional, uh, sensory. They could be long-term physical or developmental or brain injuries. 
Occasionally people suffer head injuries and it makes them vulnerable to any, any manner of exploitation and abuse. Um, and I would note it does not imply just because someone is a vulnerable adult does not say they lack capacity. They may have uh, full capacity to make decisions, but they may still be vulnerable to exploitation and abuse. Uh, a psychological injury is recognized under the social welfare chapter. Um, many of you may remember from way back when, when you attended law school in Florida, we don't talk about uh, mental abuse and we don't talk about uh, emotional abuse unless you're talking about a vulnerable adult. And then we have a psychological injury defined in the statute as an injury to the intellectual functioning or emotional state. Or emotional state, realize if you're dealing with, an, uh, with a vulnerable adult and you agitate them and create in them an emotional state that affects them, that's a psychological injury to that adult. Uh, many guardianships will be people in a memory care unit and family members want to go visit them and they don't realize what a danger it is and how bad it is because when they provide a visit, they start talking about, oh, mommy, it's a shame you're locked up in here. Oh, it's just terrible. And they get mom all agitated and she wants to leave. And that creates that psychological injury. And guardians many times have to use this type of language uh, in order to prevent people from having contact with those people who are vulnerable adults. A few other definitions, and I might mention uh, chapter 415 of the Florida statutes is called the Adult Protective Services Act. It defines abuse as any willful act or threatened act by a relative caregiver or household member, which causes or is likely to cause significant impairment to the vulnerable adult's physical, mental, or emotional health. And abuse includes acts and omissions. It's important to recognize that uh, failing to do something that that vulnerable adult is expecting you to do or is expecting the, uh, their caregiver to do, that can be considered abuse. Exploitation, we're gonna talk a lot about, but it's defined under the Adult Protective Services Act that include, but is not limited to. And you as attorneys all know when I say it may include, but is not limited to, if you can fit it in, you may be able to prove it. Breaches of fiduciary, fiduciary relationships, unauthorized taking of personal assets, misappropriation, misuse, or transfer of monies, even from a joint account, or intentional or even negligent failure to use a uh, person's income or assets for their care and keeping, for their necessities of life. Adult Protective Services Act defines neglect as a failure or omission, or omission on the part of a caregiver. Uh, of the vulnerable adult to provide the care, supervision, and services necessary to maintain the physical and mental health of the vulnerable adult, including but not limited to food, clothing, medicine, shelter, supervision, and medical services. And when I say and medical services, I have to tell you, uh, I've heard recently of a vulnerable adult whose daughter was telling her, do not get the COVID vaccine. I don't want you to get the COVID vaccine. And the vulnerable adult made her appointment to get the COVID vaccine. And her caregiver then stopped talking to her for three weeks, did not go see her, did not check on her, did not do anything. And this is the person who's supposed to be taking care of her because this caregiver, and you might guess that, yes, it's a family member. Yes, she's an anti-vaxxer and, you know, this, this results in 
that could be charges of neglect against that caregiver. I haven't communicated that neglect charge to her yet, but that's the next step, I assure you. The term neglect also means a failure of a caregiver uh, to make reasonable effort to protect the vulnerable adult from abuse, neglect, and exploitation by others. If the caregiver knows of it, they need to put a stop to it because that's the point of being a caregiver. Neglect may be repeated conduct or as little as a simple incident of carelessness which produces or could reasonably be expected to result in serious physical or psychological injury or a substantial risk of death. 